Dave, hi. You've got a book out called How to Be a Rock Star, which articulates your early life as a young boy in London, uh, straight out of art college, or in art college, playing with some of the early musicians around London in the early 60s. Um, you ended up or started off with Hamilton King Band. Could you say a little bit about that? Yes, that was the first band I ever worked or played with due to the fact that Peter Bardens, whom I met at the Byam Shaw Art College via a youth club that I used to go to, uh, found out that I could play and I ended up playing bass. And Pete was a, a pianist and he played the marquee, he played jazz there. And Ray Davis suddenly became involved in this picture by the fact that Pete suddenly came round to me one day and said, Dave, you've got to join this band. And I was at art school. Pete wasn't at art school. He was doing what he was doing. And I said, OK. And so I went up to this uh, rehearsal room in the Harrow Road, and there was Hamilton King, um, very smartly dressed, sharp suit, tie and works, shiny shoes. And sitting next to him was Ray Davis, smiling enigmatically, as he always did. And he... I mean, I was not what you call a serious bass player in those days. I'd only just picked up the bass because I just wanted to get to know people, really. I was a guitarist, sort of, could play the shadow stuff. And anyway, we settled down, and Ray was very accommodating. He never made... I was just welcome. I was just joined in, and Hamilton said, this band is about riffs. These songs are all about the riff. And this all sounded very strange after we were all playing very, you know, shadow stuff and all that sort of stuff. Well, this was a revelation for me. Pete, you know, obviously Londoner was more aware of this scene. And Ray, being a Londoner, was more aware. This was new for me. But we ended up playing this riff. Da, 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 for about half an hour, it seemed. This is my audition. And everyone played over this riff. Hamilton played wonderful key uh, harmonica. And what a fine voice he had too. And um, he was on a mission, this guy. He was on a mission to preach R&B and soul. I will preach the soul, he was kept on saying. You know, this is about soul, this is about feeling. So we did several rehearsals. And we did gigs at... Goldsmith College, headlining, and we used to go down fantastically. I I was bitten by then. The riff worked. You could just groove away everyone, and the whole thing was based on ecstasy, and you finally got to that point where everyone was going mad for it. And this was a new experience for me. My sister, very young, used to go and watch, loved it. And, you know, I was still at art school, and then... Uh, we got a residency at this ghastly club called the Kaleidoscope, which was in Water Street, run by, I'm pretty sure, Chinese gangsters. And uh, one day I picked up my amp, because I used to leave it there, it was very heavy, and I found a kind of large block of marijuana inside the cabinet. Um, you know, top of management, of course. But... Uh, it was that sort of says what it was, and then we went on to play uh, down there, and we moved a little bit away from the riff. And I remember playing with Ray and singing, uh, "We want money, that's what I want," and we all sang that together. So, yes, yeah, so I think that's pretty well what we wanted. And from the kaleidoscope, we did one or two more Goldsmiths, and then we did the scene. Ray was very quiet still. Peter B, Peter Bardens, was the noisy one. It's my band, he used to say, it's my band. And Ray and me used to laugh, just laugh. It's funny. And we did the scene. And it was quite a big club to see, and it was set in near Wimmel Street by Piccadilly. And the animals used to play there, some quite big bands. And uh, suddenly, we were doing the playing way, and Ray turned around and smiled at me. And he picked up his guitar and started playing guitar with it on, back, on his back, on the neck. And he started picking it up, and I think he was playing with his teeth. 
And this is a new ray I had never, ever, ever seen before. I was absolutely stunned. Anyway, I kept a straight face and we carried on. And a short while later, we had a, a gig at the Roaring Twenties Club off Carnaby Street, a blue beat club. They played Scar and Blue Beat there. And Dave Davis walked in smiling cheerfully and announced to all of us in the band that him and Ray had just signed a deal with Pi Records, ATV, and we are going to do it. And we said, my, you're going to be a star, you're going to be a star. And he kept that very quiet. And I think it was a good lesson he learnt in that band from Dave Hunt, jazzy band, the Hamilton King, where Hamilton preached us what a riff could really do and how it worked. I think it had a lot of influence on some of his material, early material, and early did, records. Did you record anything? Yes, we did. We went to IP, I can't remember, the, it was off Regent Street, the big studio off Regent Street, IP. C Studios, I think. And we did a song called Not Until. And I think we also recorded a song, I Wanna Live, which we used to get on fantastically. I always thought that was a great title, I Wanna Live. And it meant a lot to me when, when we used to play that. And uh, Tony Secunda, famous manager, was always there in the control room with Heinz from the Tornadoes. And obviously they were very much part of this, uh, instigating this going in the studio. So that was the first time I was in the studio. And that was, the record probably didn't do very much, but it was a good experience. And it was for Columbia Records, I think. Do you think, uh, Ray, what did Ray take from uh, uh, Hamilton King into the Kings? What, what, what aspect do you think? The riff, without a doubt. Um, all of the day, all of the night. Some of those riffs, whether they're the same or not, I really don't know. But let's bring that, that's, that's for musicologists to say. I, I just know that the influence were very strong from, from what Hamilton did. Well, after playing riff for so many, so many hours, it's bound to influence anyone, isn't it?